This video contains the solutions for, you guessed it, 2004 AP Physics C Mechanics, number two. Uh, if you remember, this is the one that the average score, I think, was five out of 15. Pretty shabby, if you ask me. Um, okay, so calculate the linear acceleration A of the falling block in terms of the given quantities. Given quantities are M, R is the radius of the pulley, uh, T, and D. If you think about your map of all of your different concepts and equations and relationships, um, time only really comes into play in a few places. Time is the variable in um, kinematics equations, or one of the variables in uh, some of those kinematics equations. and um, it's also involved in impulse, right, um, and power, but I don't think this problem has anything to do with this. So um, hopefully you're thinking here that the linear acceleration here, if I know how long it took to fall that distance, this is just a kinematics problem. So you could think of it like really old school. It's a vertical problem. And, well, it's not free fall, so that's a little bit misleading. We don't know what A is. A is just what we're trying to find, right? We know it's going released from rest, so initial velocity is zero, and we don't know its final velocity, we know its displacement is negative d if you want that to be, it doesn't really matter if you decide negative the um, down direction or not. I'm just going to say that delta y is d. You can make it negative if you want. And um, what else do we know? We know what the time is. The time is, this is a given quantity, so it doesn't look like we have it, but we do because we're allowed to use that. Um, all right, so we've got three. We need to find a fourth. So which equation is this? And let's see, do I have a copy? I don't have a copy of the the equations that you will have here, but you know that we have our kinematics equation that says delta y is equal to initial velocity times t plus one half a t squared. Well, initial velocity is zero, so that's gone. So I get d equal to one half a t squared, and that means that A is equal to, let's see, multiply the two over here and divide, so A is equal to 2D over T squared. For part B, uh, time is measured for various heights D and the data are recorded in the following table. And they would like to know what quantities should be graphed in order to best determine the acceleration of the block. Um, there are multiple correct answers for this, and you can look online at their rubric to see some of them if you're interested. But the best one, the best practice here, is to take a look at the variables you have, find an equation like this, d equals one-half at squared, that relates them, and then try to map y equals mx onto this. So. My reasoning would be, if I graph this like y equals m x, so graph d versus t squared. Remember, this always comes in the order. Graph y versus x, right? y x first and then x. Um, dependent and independent. And uh, because slope will be equal to one half a. So that's all you need to say for the reasoning. Um, it's not the only correct answer, but I think that's the best one. On the grid below, plot the quantities determined in B1, 
and draw the best fit lines to the data. Well, let's see. I'm going to add to this t squared, which would be seconds squared. So I have my ordered pairs. And just quickly get those values. 0.68 squared is 0 0.46. 0 0.02 squared is 1.04. 1.19 squared is 1.42. 1.38 squared is 1.9. Zero. And let's see, in the exam you have your separate answer booklet, so you'll do it on the graph in the answer booklet. Here, I'm going to have to remember, let's see, these go up by 0.5s, and that's on my y axis. So, one, two, three, four, well, that's perfect. So that's 0.5, 1, 1.5, and 2. This is distance measured in meters. And then on the other x-axis, it looks like, or sorry, on the x-axis there, or the t-squared axis that we're going to make it, we have um, maximum value of 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So I think the same scaling will work here. 0.5, 1, 1.5, and 2. This is t-squared and the units would be seconds squared. So we have the point, um, point 0.5, point 0.46. Oops, sorry, I should read them the other way around, right? Point 0.46, point 0.5. So point, that would be point 0.46, point 0.5, so I'll go right about there. And 1.04, and 1 would be 1.1, 1.04, about halfway, and 1. 1.42 uh, and 1.5. 1 1.4 1 would be here, 1.42 is here above that, and 1.5, about there. And the last one, 1 1.9 and 2. Point nine would be right here and two. And we look, we try to draw. Oh dear. A line goes through there. Use the side of your calculator or something. You do a better job than I did. That should probably be a little bit lower, but near enough. And um Last part, uh, part three here, they want us to use our graph to calculate the magnitude of the acceleration. Well, we need to find the slope of this and then um, set that equal to one half a, because one half a is our slope in this equation. So, in the interest of just making sure you, know, you remember how to do this, let's go ahead and get the calculator to find the line. You could pick two points that you think it's better not to pick two points that, that you actually have. It's better to pick two points that look like they're on your line of best fit. Um, or, if you remember how to do it and you have the time, you're going to go to second calc edit and remember to don't hit delete, hit clear if you want to get this, whatever junk this was. And in L1, I have the t squared values. That's 0 0.46, 1.04, 1.42, and 1.9. And then in these ones, I just have uh, 0.5, 1, 1.5, and 2. So there are data points. And we go to stat calculate, we want a linear regression, number four, and the slope of that looks like it is 1.057. So, this is part three here. Slope equals 1.057, 
So 1 half a, remember that's what the slope was in our equation, is equal to 1.057. So a is 2 times that. So 2 times 1.057 is about 2.1 meters per second squared. You could keep another decimal place there. Don't keep too many. Sometimes they actually take off a point for keeping too many significant figures. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, now we want to calculate the rotational inertia of the pulley in terms of m, r, a, which we have, uh, and fundamental constants. And I think they don't want us to actually plug in the, that value, at least not yet. So let's see. And draw diagram here. On this block, there are two forces acting. Mg, the weight of the block, and tension. And here, the torque acting on the pulley is also T, right? Because the tension is the tension. Um, now, these two are not equal, otherwise the block would never have started moving in the first place, or if it were moving, it'd be going at a constant velocity. So these are the things that we need to recognize here. From the block, we get one equation, which is net force on the block is equal to mg minus t, and force is equal to mass times acceleration. And we're allowed to use that, right? We actually know what it is from the last part. Okay, that gives us one equation. And then here, another equation with t, is t is the only force here. So using the equation torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration, Torque is force times radius here, no sine theta because it's at 90 degrees. So that's T times R, the radius of the pulley. That's equal to the moment of inertia, which we want to solve for, times, and then angular acceleration is A divided by R. Right. So let's see where this gets us. Um, I don't particularly want any t's in here, so why don't we do some substituting here and say about this, t would be equal to mg minus ma. So mg minus ma times r equals Where'd that R come from? That should be capital R too. Is equal to moment of inertia times A over R. And I'm trying to solve for rotational inertia, so multiply both sides by this. That gives me, let's see, I is equal to. Um, R squared over A times mg minus ma. There are different ways you could simplify that, I suppose, um, but that's totally okay, like that. That is the hardest part of this problem. But by the way, if you had got everything right up to here, which was relatively straightforward, that's 9 out of the 15 points. You've almost doubled the average there already. This is um, icing on the cake, so to speak. Um, part D, the value of acceleration found in 3, which is this, along with numerical values for the given quantities and your answer to C, can be used to determine the rotational inertia of the pulley. The pulley is removed from its support, and its rotational inertia is found to be greater than this value. So give one explanation for this discrepancy. So. Um, Let's see, that means what we measured was actually a little bit less. The real moment of inertia, um, or rotational inertia, was more. That means like it, it seemed like it was more massive. 
So it turned faster than it was supposed to. Um, so could friction cause that to cause it to turn faster than it was supposed to? No. The, I think the first thing you might think here is, oh, I bet it was because of the presence of friction. But here, that couldn't be the case because if our value was too small, that means it was actually accelerating too fast, faster than it should have been. So what could have gone wrong? Well, they just want one explanation for this. And there are a few possible ones. One is that the there was an experimental error in measuring R or M. And um, what would have resulted in a smaller moment of inertia would be as if we measured R to be too big, right? If we measured a certain acceleration, we measured R to be bigger than it was, it would give us a smaller rotational inertia. And uh, also, if we had the mass, that was too big. Um, another possible explanation that they offered was if the rope were coiled around several times, then the actual radius would have been further out than what we thought it was, what we had measured. Let me think about this for a second to make sure that that's right, if it's too big. So if we had measured R to be too big, then we would have a let's see our moment of inertia would have been too big which it was, yeah, so that's right and um, I think what they're really looking for is something besides friction. So I think error in measuring R or M. Oh, and another one that they offered was that it would have seemed like the mass was accelerating faster than it should have if, in fact, the string was slipping. Kind of like a yo-yo. So that's another possible explanation. But friction is not one. I think that was just one extra point on the end, um, or maybe two.